Hello there, and welcome to the Forts Pro League. This is very exciting, Incursus. Season three of the FPL. Yes. Uh, it's, there's just, we have so many teams this season. Um, or was it up at 40 teams? 40 teams, so 80 players, and then you got your subs. So, you know, we're starting to get close to 100 players uh, involved in this, in this league, which is just... It just shows you it's growing and growing um, and uh, getting better and better. So, yeah, very excited to see how this all plays out. Oh, yes. I, I have been looking forward to this for some time. We have plans. We have lots of plans. And I, I it's, hope too. it's something that the, uh, that the viewers will get to enjoy as well. Speaking of which, it looks like we're uh, going to be starting out with the Better Gym versus Giat. These two teams. Uh, these are teams with players who are mostly newish. Um, team Giat here on the uh, right hand side has Gengar, one of the more well known players here. Uh, I'm looking at Butterdog's base up here, like it's it, it's wobbly, it's real wobbly. But I do actually it's I do actually like the setup he's going for there. It's it's quite it's quite good, it's quite stable despite its wobbly butteriness. Butteriness, I love that description. <laughs> Despite the butteriness of the base, it is, it is quite stable and strong. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, team Better Gym here on the left is looking, I'm going to say, it's looking like a base I would expect for players who are relatively new to the Forts experience. Of course, this is the Forts Pro League, which is an open league, open season style league. So we have players of all calibers here. This is not a tournament. This is not a... you. Play or fight until you're eliminated. It is a round robin style series where everyone gets to play against each other, and based on their performance, they their teams in accrue individually scored points. And uh, winner is dictated by the number of points accrued by the end of the season, and thus rank. So we will see a quite a wide variety of skill and strategies implemented and strewn throughout the uh, throughout these seasons and i believe we're going to see something akin to that here although i will say uh the guy jim up top did recognize the instability in his base and is getting some manner of stability tech to assist in that and we're not talking about new brand new players here um i just think there's a difference in caliber between what we're seeing on the right hand side and what we're seeing on the left and i'm curious to see how that pans out because here on the left hand side it looks like team one Team Better Jim is going for AP Minigunners. AP Minigunners are quite fun. Um, one of the benefits of the Armadillo Commander. Armadillo Commander, aside from the fast opening doors and just generally cheaper and stronger defenses, does get access to the AP Minigunner, which is, it's a minigunner whose rounds have the armor piercing effect, which not terribly surprising as it's kind of, the name is kind of self-explanatory but it's quite effective um, the only issue with them that we tend to the reason we tend to not see them in higher level play is mini gunners take a second or two to unleash their volley and in that time snipers come for them you guys who are familiar with the uh the fort's higher tiers of play know the snipers can be pretty oppressive at all points in time and so you you take something expensive like a double upgraded minigunner to, you know, AP minigunner levels and you apply sniper to it and suddenly you have something that's generally not worth the investment. Generally, as fun as it may be. I am curious to see how this match will play out. I am surprised to see Team 2 go so heavily into the... I'm going to describe them as the hybrid weapons, the, uh, the fire beams and the 20 millimeters. Mm. These are things you typically don't often see. I suspect this may be Team Giat here having a bit of fun. They're aware that their opponents are less experienced players and are trying oh. to use fire beams and 20 mils, you know, because they can give those delicious weapons some, some uh, play time before having to bring out the big guns against the more experienced players. As is, we see this guy Jim here, that guy Jim here, getting roasted <laughs> and toasted. His insides cooking like an oven as he's getting slammed by those uh, fire beams and the 20 millimeters. 
Okay. He's done well to stay standing. Yes, uh, I mentioned before he, he's he's not completely new. Like he's he's got some stability tech in there. He's he's keeping himself intact, barely, but he's trying. He's hanging in there. Mm. He's taking. He's he's got some holes at his base. It looks like Swiss cheese over here, but we've got some arts happening on the right hand side of the world. As twenty mils and fire beams go <laughs> splashing back into that guy Jim once again. I'm looking uh, real suspicious here on uh, for Team Gat. <laughs> Let's see. Looks like that the better Jim here is uh, looking to tech up toward heavier weapons. We see a couple of fire beams placed. I am concerned about the fire beam position for a uh, splay beat here. Uh, this is a particularly aggressive oh. and greedy position. Yeah, uh, we've seen this every so core with it. <laughs> yes, yes, that's one hundred percent. When those fire beams go, the core goes with it because there's there's just no defenses between the fire beams and the core. So what ends up happening yep. is a single door snipe that core is gone, or just generally if the weapons get penned. This creates a um, single point of failure for the entire base, and uh, once Team T recognizes that, which I suspect they have, given that these doors are exposed, it's just gonna get hit until it breaks, and then Splay Beat falls. We notice a similar-ish build pattern out of Gengar on the right-hand side, except that there is a wall of defense and plenty of an air gap to mitigate both uh, direct fire damage and splash damage. A substantial difference, which is uh, not present here for, for Splay Beat. Don't kill him. He's kindly requesting them to leave the arts alive while arming <laughs> the arts, I might add. He's yeah. requesting that his opponents play nicely and don't destroy his art yeah. piece while building weapons on it, which is... Well, that, that speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. Good lord. Oh, oh, here we go. Boy, that was that was close. Ooh. A little bit of a little bit of penetration. Fire beam breaks, but the doors don't get penned in the process. Uh, that guy Jim here building some back turbines, but not building the background bracing, which enables them to work. Lots of uh, energy shields out of that guy Jim up top, and I don't blame him. Every single weapon currently fielded by Team Gat is. Uh, cannot penetrate energy shields, so the energy shields are a great choice. However, it is worth noting um, that that guy Jim, with all those energy shields, is currently rocking out at plus 27 energy, which is not much energy. Um, for reference, a single ener a single wind turbine, or for reference, uh, the core gives 100 energy. A single turbine at 100% gives closer to 30. So it's... Um, not producing much power there in totality. The EMPs come from the art piece, uh, shutting down those energy shields, and in doing so, allowing allowing the weapons from Team 2 to uh, go deep into their opponent's bases, causing secondary explosions as components burn. EMPs splashing across once again, ensuring those energy shields are permanently knocked offline, at least permanent until they're repaired. We see more 20 millimeters splashing across top base. EMPs coming out once again, shutting down those energy shields even harder. Fire beams cutting through wood as they like to do. Well, you say like a hot knife through butter, but butter is on a uh, team two here. Looks like Team Giat is actually. Uh, Increasing their firepower with some proper heavy weapons rather than the uh, more hybrid style. Something that can penetrate through energy shields on their own, right? Oops. Zapped. A little bit of uh, return laser fire. Mm -hmm. Reflected off of an energy shield. Looks like Splay beats selling off his only fire beam, which 
will leave him completely unable to return fire of his own of his own accord. First cannon shell fired, and with it, uh, it's a it's a hard miss, but everything else impacts, and there's a lot of everything else incoming. So oh. display beat has officially lost the last of the turbines. Plasma beam coming through and disconnecting a bunch of background bursts and fire beams, making sure everything stays ignited. As uh, hmm. Team One's bases are crumbling to the ground, with that most recent disconnection from the uh, from metal mining nodes. There, he's going to start suffering some extreme economic degradation here. We've seen Team 2 kind of sort of focusing on keeping that part of the base disconnected to prevent any kind of uh, reconstruction. You can't rebuild if you don't have money for it. It's worth noting that this entire time, uh, the top base here has been trying to survive their own. Their own heap loads of, uh, of incoming firepower. And in doing so with the, I'm going to just say, over-investment in energy shields, has prevented them from doing anything out on the field. You see, they're only just now working on Tier 1 tech in that workshop onto the field, which is the prerequisite for getting tier 2 tech and weapons that can meaningfully return fire. Looks like Team 2, Team Gyat here has gone from uh, playing with fire to just, well, playing with their food. <laughs> That guy, Jim, the last uh, the last player standing for Team 1 at the moment, has a bit of a beach, uh, full front beach front property with lots of sandbags everywhere. Some energy shields behind it, which will uh, keep his base intact for a volley or two. However, with the EMPs available for Team 2, as well as plenty of standard cannons at this stage, uh, they'll sh go clean through those energy shields in uh, quick order. With those energy shields falling, there's not going to be anything stopping them from taking out the core, as is the core is taking splash damage from the cannons that are impacting the energy shields. Looks like that guy Jim is trying to re-expand toward his former teammate's base, and doing so potentially give him access to a little bit more economy. There's no energy to be had down there, but there is a bit more metal production. Uh, looks like Team 2 is not happy about that guy Jim collecting some more uh, income. And they're trying to disconnect that uh, that trunk there. Looks like they're sending those cannons pretty much straight to that guy Jim's core. Probably trying to end the match uh, relatively quickly here. Those mortars will absolutely make quick work of everything on that guy Jim's base. There's not really much more to say here. That guy Jim has nothing to return to fire, nothing to defend himself with. He's just got a bit of beefiness to keep himself intact. And as is, his core is currently exposed. As we can see, a 20mm or a standard cannon will blow clean through that and finish the game. Alternatively, mortars fire quickly and might just do it themselves. And there it is. Death by Buzzsaw. Team Kiat wins round one in this best of three. You'll love to see it.
very good. All right. A little bit one-sided. A little, little bit, bit one-sided, but that is the yeah. nature of the Forts Pro League. Some things will be like that. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets to face everyone, and in doing so, they get to uh, get to experience the joys of, I'm going to say, uh, uneven skill sets, which is, it's fine. It really yeah, it's fine. part of it. I mean, the one thing we've done this uh, season is uh, we've put the Amateur League on pause for the moment, and we've kind of merged both the Amateur League and the Pro League together, uh, mainly because uh, we wanted to basically make it uh, the one league bigger. I guess we're the sort of competitive scene wasn't quite big enough to manage two separate leagues. Mm -hmm. So uh, putting them all together, obviously that creates this kind of situation, but there are other um, pros and there are other amateurs. So there, you know, there should be uh, other times where it's a little bit more balanced. And um, yeah, and we'll just see how this particular season goes. This is the first time we've tried combining it all together and we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Um, and, uh, tweak accordingly. <laughs> yes, I'm not too worried about it. Like, the, uh, as, as we've said before, everyone's going to face everyone. So there is going to be yes. some matches like this one where there's an obvious disparity in the player capabilities. And yet, uh, for a majority of the matches, well, maybe not a majority, but they will still be facing players of their own caliber. It's just this match is not one of those matches. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, are we, has everybody swapped over? And we're off. So this league is, uh, like, the finals are planned for mid to late May. So we've got a couple months of the group stages. So lots of games. And um, uh, I think you said you're going to stream a couple of them uh, in Yes, curses? yes, yes. I'll be, doing a couple of, I'll be doing a couple of stream sessions like this one. So basically, mm -hmm. for those who are unfamiliar, the way the Forts Pro League works is that these matches aren't done in some tournament format. These aren't uh, some live stream or some live event type thing. It's an open offline series where players just play against each other and report the results into the matchmaking system. This means that it isn't inherently tied to any particular time. I don't have to be there hosting matches. It doesn't have to be there. There is going to. There is always a um, like a, a referee present, yep. but there isn't a requirement that it be done on some particular day during an event. Uh, this means that there's no mechanical reason to do a, a big event for it. However, big events are fun. And so I intend to do a fair few streams for the enjoyment of it. I do want to say that not all players are into that because some players are like, oh, hey, like I know there's a delay on this stream, but some people don't like being live streamed anyways. So not every match is going to be live streamed. But nevertheless, we will be doing a fair few events for the people who enjoy that kind of thing. It's a good time all around. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of which... And I get the, and I was just going to say also uh, maybe some um, casted replays and stuff like that. Yes. Of yes. some uh, key matches. Yes. Uh, that is that is something that we're very much so looking forward to. Something we did a bit of in the last uh, last season as well is the yep. especially for the better matches the, or the more popular matchups for, for the players, uh, there will be dedicated videos and off of these matches because because they're offline matches uh, they can be recorded and done casted at any time so it makes it incredibly convenient and uh, oh god there oh the sniping already <laughs> happens it's yeah so there'll be plenty there'll be plenty of words pro league content coming out throughout the season over the next over the next uh, month excellent i'm looking forward to all of it Hmm. Speaking of speaking of content, we've got snipers abusing wind turbines, which is something you don't often see. This man building multiple explosive barrels in their base. Why are you? What are you doing? Okay. Well, here we have on the left hand side is Team Giat, uh, Gengar, and Butter Dog playing as the Shock and Awe Commander. Uh, Shock and Awe Commander, um, known for explosive barrels, and there's no reason to be building explosive barrels in your base. There's no mechanical reason to build explosive barrels in your base. Um, mechanically, what they do is they uh, act as a second core, so you can still control your forts if something happens to your core, or you can build them at an external expansion and then plop a 
explosive barrel there and have it act as a core so you can physically disconnect while still maintaining control. So there is no mechanical reason to build an explosive barrel in your base attached to your core. That's just because he likes the color red, apparently. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Red's a great color, and let him, let him have his fun. Um, so that's that's what's going on here. Uh, they're playing a shock, and uh, it's more notably the this man's building a concentrator. More notably, um, <laughs> this man is Gengar is building a concentrate nader up here. Now, like I mentioned it before, they're having fun in these matches because they can, and they still expect to get their score and their points for winning the match while having fun with it. So this is what we're seeing here. On the topic of the commander itself, Shakana's benefit is that it temporarily upgrades the hybrid weapons, the, the fire beam, for example, up to a full plasma beam during their commander active. This allows uh, Gengar here to build fire beams, build up that commander active ability by uh, doing fire beam damage, then activate their commander ability and do plasma beam damage. So that's gonna be fun. We're gonna get to see a concentrate nader out of team one here. Team two is looking like they're going with portal nukes, which is an interesting decision. Team two over here on the other hand, going for something more resembling a standard play. Uh, we're seeing lots of cannons out of Team 2. They're playing as the Eagle Eye Commander. They get to double shot their cannons, and assuming they're prepared for that. Uh, we do see some tiny doors out of out of each player, which is... You'll love to see it. I, I like the flak position here. It's an interesting stopgap. But I'm curious to see how it's actually going to uh, play out. Yep, concentrate nated fire beam, and uh, suddenly, uh, Splay Beats from Team Two here is uh, is suffering a little bit of uh, extra coolants to his core. This man coming out here with a double sniper, bringing Splay Beat down to fifty-five percent. Surprised they didn't take him out there. Yeah, I I think they were just completely unprepared for that. They just didn't expect to, to bisect Splay Beat there. And so they were just weren't ready to capitalize on it. So that's, you know, hilarious. Oh boy. Wouldn't mind waiting another five minutes, they say in chat. <laughs> Funny story. Uh, that's not going to end the way you think it is. This man's doing that's science. Right. Um, if you wait five minutes, his science becomes exponentially more powerful. Like, you give him that, man's going to build a prism, and then this is not. Like, you can't. You're not going to survive that. <laughs> like, yeah, sure, you may get... It's like, oh, yeah, I need to get my tech back or get a cannon. You'll get two cannons out. Man's going to have a concentrated prism with six plasma beams. That's not That's not a fair trade. That's really not a fair trade. Uh, but, you know, uh, maybe Team 1 would be happy with that, actually. It's like, yeah, we'll give them five minutes. Just You don't shoot us, we don't shoot you. Don't worry about it. It's, it'll, it'll, it'll get real exciting when those five minutes... Uh, when those five minutes... Uh, end up completing yeah we see double nuke approaching uh oh and it hits Oof. a bit of a fire beam follow-up uh cannon goes away it was always a rough cannon position to begin with but i don't blame him given that guy jim suffered up. yep there's the uh yeah. there's the concentrate nader Commander active turning those plas turning those uh, fire beams into plasmas. <laughs> and uh, straight chopping Jim off of the foundations. Always a good time, you love to see it. Uh, splay beat here, covering themselves in energy shields for obvious reasons. Also getting a bit of a uh, getting a bit of a MG wall, an anti-air wall to uh, help defend against those nukes. Unfortunately, there are four missile launchers there for Team 1. Butter Dog going with Double Swarm and Double Nuke. Doesn't quite have the swarms ready to launch just yet. Needs to get themselves a portal to send them forward. I think he's suffering a little bit of uh, energy production issues. You see him sitting at a 225 energy per second, which is enough 
to fire, but not enough to fire quickly. I think is what's I think is what he's dealing with at this stage of the game. And we'll see those nukes fly once more. Looking like Splay, we gonna try doing some manual anti here. Ah, uh, that's it's not gonna matter. There's there's too much. The EMPs land, and with those EMPs landing, the uh, energy shields are down, and so the uh, the concentrate nader will reign supreme once again. <laughs> And there it is. Whew. That's uh, that's about what we could expect here. Triple EMP. Oh, oh. my gosh. <laughs> he actually did it with the EMPs. <laughs> Good lord. Well, there it is. Team Gyat winning this best of three. Uh, quite handily, I might say. Yeah, Team Gyat winning, winning themselves points for this round.